The term meat grinder is a widely used description of Russia's military strategy in its campaign to seize the Donbass, and this strategy, despite the enormous human cost, is working. As the Times writes, even taking into account Russia's meat grinder strategy, the scale of losses among Russians in Donbass in recent months has become unprecedented. According to American intelligence, August and September were the bloodiest months of the war. More than 1,200 Russians were killed or wounded every day. However suicidal the strategy may be, it is not without effect. The Times notes, as Russia has gained territory in the past two months at a pace not seen since 2022, seizing 318 square miles, according to the intelligence agency Blackbird Group. As Andre, a paratrooper from one of the airborne brigades defending the front line near Kurokovo, told the publication between 20 and 30 Russians are killed during daily sorties against his company's positions. The people they send on these raids are not real combat units and are poorly trained. Andre says, but it still depletes our ammunition supplies and every time one of our guys is either wounded or killed. He says that sometimes Russian soldiers manage to get into Ukrainian territory and hide and then Ukrainian armed forces have to spend time searching for and eliminating them. The purpose of all this is to exhaust our resources and distract attention. It's crude, but it works. Two weeks ago, they managed to advance 500 meters, he said. Potential collaborators who may remain among local residents also pose a danger. Almost all the locals I met support us, but we have to constantly move our positions because there are those who give coordinates to the Russians, says Nazar Voitenkov, a press officer for the 79th Brigade. Ukrainian military analyst Kostyantin Mashovets examines the overall situation on the front line where Russia has managed to achieve tactical progress at the expense of intense loss of human life in meat grinder assaults and suggests a way forward. Ukraine's command should focus on improving the quality of artillery and above all, infantry. Russian Defense Minister Andrei Belusov arrived in Beijing for an official visit on Monday. Belusov attended a welcoming ceremony, laid a wreath at the Monument to the People's Heroes at Tiananmen Square and held talks with his Chinese counterpart Dong Jun. He praised Russian-Chinese relations and stressed that Moscow is determined to implement all agreements. Russian-Chinese military cooperation is an important element of increasing defense capability, maintaining global and regional stability, Belusov added. The Chinese defense minister said that both countries have a common desire to promote military cooperation. Дружественные отношения России и Китая сохраняют высокую динамику развития, расширяются по всем направлениям и находятся на беспрецедентном уровне. Ключевую роль в укреплении стратегических связей играют доверительные контакты лидеров двух стран настроенные на реализацию всех достигнутых на высшем уровне договоренностей. Российско-китайское военное сотрудничество – важный элемент повышения обороноспособности, поддержания глобальной и региональной стабильности. Мы регулярно проводим совместную оперативную боевую подготовку на суше, море и воздухе. Успешно отрабатываем учебно-боевые задачи, в том числе самой высокой сложности. 
рассчитываю на тесное плодотворное сотрудничество с китайскими товарищами. Уверен, что сегодняшний... The European Union on Monday imposed sanctions on Iran's deputy defense minister, senior members of its paramilitary revolutionary guard and three airlines over allegations that they supplied drones, missiles and other equipment to Russia for use in its war against Ukraine. Commission President Ursula von der Leyen confirmed the new measures during an appearance in Berlin, alongside German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. The daily killing and the death of innocent people that we see would not be possible without the supplies and the supply lines by Iran. And therefore, these sanctions against Iran are sending a very clear message. Contributions to terror and Russia's illegal war of aggression have serious consequences, von der Leyen said. Iranian Deputy Defense Minister Syed Hamza Galandari is one of seven senior officials now banned from traveling in Europe and whose assets in the bloc were frozen. The EU said he is involved in the development of Iran's and missile program, given his high-level defense role. Iran Air, Mahan Air and Saha Airlines had their assets frozen. The EU said their planes were used repeatedly to transfer Iranian-made unmanned aerial vehicles and related technologies to Russia, which have been used in Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. EU foreign ministers endorsed the sanctions at a meeting in Luxembourg. In March, the bloc had warned that, were Iran to transfer ballistic missiles and related technology to Russia for use against Ukraine, the EU would be prepared to respond swiftly including with new and significant restrictive measures. EU member countries, with the exception of Hungary, have been supplying weapons and ammunition as well as economic and other support to Ukraine worth some 118 billion euros since Russia launched its full-scale invasion in February 2022. Yes, uh, actually, um, I can inform you that today the Council took a decision on sanctions on Iran. Um, the reason is uh, that Iran is supporting Russia's drone and missile terror against innocent civilians in Ukraine. The daily killing and the death of innocent people that we see would not be possible without the supplies and the supply lines by Iran. And therefore, these san sanctions uh, against Iran are sending a very clear message. Contributions to terror and Russia's illegal war of aggression have serious consequences.